In a harrowing tale of ambition meeting unforgiving nature, the Donner Party's journey westward in 1846 became a grim lesson in the perils of overconfidence. Driven by the allure of manifest destiny, they chose a dubious shortcut that led them into a frozen hell, forcing them to make unimaginable choices just to survive. This is a cautionary tale that still echoes through the annals of American history. Today on Bizarre History, we delve into the disturbing story that is the Donner Party. In the spring of 1846, several families from Springfield, Illinois, embarked on the great overland migration to California. Among them were the families of brothers George and Jacob Donner and businessman James Reed, who left Springfield on April 14th with some 31 people total. Eager to reach the fertile farmlands of Central California, they made quick progress across the plains, covering around 650 miles in just six weeks. By mid-July, the Donner-Reed party had reached Fort Laramie in present-day Wyoming. There, the wagon train divided, with most opting for the well-established Oregon Trail. However, the Reeds, Donners, and others chose to head southwest toward the dubious Hastings Cutoff, recommended by the unreliable guide Lansford Hastings. James Reed had been warned against this route by a friend who had just traveled it, but the group pressed on nonetheless. Electing George Donner as their leader, the party soon swelled to 87 men, women, and children in 23 wagons at its peak. Though initially filled with optimism, they had unknowingly embarked on a much harder and dangerous path that would end in unimaginable tragedy. After splitting from the main train at Fort Laramie, the Donner Reed party headed southwest toward Fort Bridger on the Hastings Cutoff. This dubious new route had been promoted by Lansford Hastings, who falsely claimed it would shorten the journey by some 125 miles. In truth, Hastings had never even traveled the full route before recommending it to immigrants. The families were initially optimistic, electing George Donner as their leader and swelling to 87 settlers in 23 wagons. However, the terrain soon proved much more difficult than anticipated. The party found itself struggling across the rugged Wasatch Mountains and Great Salt Lake Desert under grueling conditions. Despite the immense challenges, they pressed on toward California, unaware of the greater hardships still to come. In late July 1846, the Donner Party entered the dubious Hastings Cutoff. Lured by the false promise, it would shave over 300 miles off their journey. Despite the unknown risks, they initially made good progress across the Wasatch Mountains. However, the harsh terrain soon dashed their optimism. Hastings abandoned them, and James Reed struggled to guide the group through nearly impassable country. Precious weeks were lost, carving a new trail through the mountains. Even worse hardships awaited in the scorching Great Salt Lake Desert, which took five agonizing days to cross instead of the promised two. Dozens of cattle perished, wagons were discarded, morale plunged as they conducted a hopeless search for their lost oxen. Their circuitous path through the Ruby Mountains put them weeks behind schedule. By late September, all other migrants had already reached California, while the Donner Party raced frantically against the coming winter. Despite immense sacrifices, Hastings' shortcut had achieved the opposite of its promise, significantly delaying the immigrants and imperiling their journey across the Sierra Nevada. As they ascended the Sierra Nevada in October, tensions reached a breaking point among the exhausted and desperate migrants. James Reed was banished after fatally stabbing a teamster in a confrontation. With food critically low and Paiute wires killing their remaining oxen, the party was forced to cash all possessions except the bare essentials needed for survival. Their dreams of California were disintegrating with the first winter snowflakes. On October 31st, the weary and haggard band, now reduced to 83 surviving members, reached Donner Pass, only to find drifts blocking the route ahead. Despite epic sacrifices, they had run out of time just miles from their destination. 
With no alternative, the migrants made camp at Truckee Lake, hoping for a brief winter delay before reaching the lush Sacramento Valley. But the snows continued unabated, soon making retreat impossible. Having gambled on Hastings' shortcut, the Donner Party now faced a frozen prison, threatening their very survival. The decisions that had delayed their journey would now impose a horrific test of endurance. In November 1846, members of the Donner Party established primitive camps at Truckee Lake, hastily erecting simple log cabins against the coming winter. Of the 87 pioneers, 60 settled by the lake in three makeshift cabins, while the Donner families camped five miles away at Alder Creek. Provisions were already critically low after their strenuous journey. The first major blizzard struck on November 4th, lasting eight days. With Truckee Lake not yet frozen, fishing proved unsuccessful for the unexperienced immigrants. Some oxen remained, but many were already dead or dying. Families traded precious goods for the carcasses of starved cattle. Deepening cold and snow soon killed the remaining livestock, leaving the party with no food source. As 1847 dawned, some resorted to boiling ox hides and eating mice to fend off starvation. By mid-December, the Donner Party realized some members had to risk the pass on snowshoes or perish. On December 16th, a group of 17 men, women, and children set out from Truckee Lake in what became known as the Forlorn Hope. Trudging through waist-deep snow, blinded by the glare, many were soon snow blind. On December 21st, they lost their guide, Charles Stanton, reduced to eating strips of dried human flesh. Patrick Dolan and others died. Only seven reached a Milwaukee village in late January, havoc written on their bodies. Local settlers raced to save the others too late for many. In the camps, dire hunger drove survivors to eat the oxhide from their snowshoes, transforming it into a gelatinous substance after boiling. Some cabins morphed into silent tombs, sheltering only the deceased. The disaster separated families. The bereaved Mrs. Murphy looked after nine children, while Mrs. Graves took in eight. Before joining the snowshoe party, some mothers entrusted their infants to other women. News of fatalities, including Jacob Donner's at Alder Creek, reached them. At Truckee Lake, desperate fathers considered the unthinkable, killing young Luis and Salvador for sustenance. Those alive were locked in a raw battle for one more sunrise. After consuming dogs and cow hides, the death toll rose and unthinkable cannibalism of the deceased became the grim last resort. Louis Kiesberg, the final survivor, resorted to this dark act until his departure on April 21st. Before reaching the mountain camps, five immigrants perished 34 either at the camps or while attempting to traverse the mountains, and one after arriving at settlements. Two men who joined at the lake also lost their lives. The grim total stood at 42 deaths with 47 enduring survivors. Of the 87 pioneers trapped by winter at Truckee Lake in Alder Creek, just 45 emaciated survivors were retrieved by multiple relief parties from February to April 1847. On February 19th, the first party reached Donner Lake and found 48 survivors, many near death. By eating the flesh of the dead, they had barely endured. A second party arrived on March 1st to scenes of unspeakable cannibalism. Attempting more rescues, some relief members themselves became trapped by a blizzard at the grimly named Starved Camp. On March 12th, a third party reached Starved Camp, finding further evidence of cannibalism and Isaac Donner's remains. The final relief expedition arrived April 17th to discover just one survivor still at the camp, Louis Kiesberg, surrounded by the ravaged bodies of his fellow travelers. The last to be transported to Sutter's Fork, Keysburg arrived April 29. In total, 
two-thirds of the men and one-third of women and children perished, some consumed by those desperate to survive. The grisly accounts in newspapers nationwide created outrage and horror. Lansford Hastings and James Reed faced blame for their poor leadership, yet had survived themselves. While the gruesome reports curtailed immigration west, gold fever would soon override fears. For those haunted few who endured the mountain camps, their lives were forever changed. The Donner Party became a cautionary tale about the high cost of overconfidence in the face of Western perils. If you want more of history's long-held secrets and darkest confessions, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. From us at Bizarre History, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.